2023 was one for the record books when it comes to climate, and not always in the best ways. For example, in the Northern Hemisphere, they recorded the hottest summer, and in the Southern Hemisphere, the warmest winter. Last year, the United States had 28 confirmed disaster events, each resulting in more than $1 billion in damages. From the devastating fires that ripped through Lahaina to Southern California seeing its first ever tropical storm watch and smoke from Canadian wildfires turning the skies in New York City orange, these were just some of the big climate events that people witnessed throughout the world. Now to break down all this data from 2023, we're joined by NASA's chief scientist and senior climate advisor, Kate Calvin. You know, Kate, NASA and NOAA just announced the latest global temperature data for last year. Where does 2023 rank in the climate record? 2023 was far and away the warmest year on record. Collectively, the last 10 years have been the warmest since modern record keeping began. 2023 was about two and a half degrees Fahrenheit above the late 19th century average, but we're seeing more warming over land than over ocean, more in higher latitudes than lower latitudes. So almost anywhere you look in 2023, temperatures were above average. We also saw a lot of extreme events throughout the year. So there were a lot of heat waves. We had the warmest summer ever. Um, so we saw heat waves. We saw heavy precipitation events in some parts of the United States. We saw wildfires. So climate change drives increases in fire weather. Um, so where it's hot, dry, and windy, as well as fuel for fire. And so we saw evidence of those fires um, throughout the United States and Canada this year. You mentioned wildfires. That's something we also experienced here in Hawaii. What does this data tell us about the region that we're living in? Yeah, so we have a lot of information. So we, we use a lot of satellites to understand the Earth, and our satellites are global, so we can see all of the Earth. And we look at different things, and so we, we can understand things like hurricanes. One of the changes we're seeing with climate change is that we're seeing more intense hurricanes, so a higher proportion of our storms are categories three through five. We're also seeing more heavy rainfall events associated with storms, um, and we, we are able to provide that information both to the public but as well as to um, weather forecasters around the world. Right now, we're in a really strong El Nino. For our viewers, can you explain what exactly an El Nino is and how it impacts global temperatures? So El Nino is part of a natural cycle. So we have El Nino years tend to be warmer on average. Um, La Nina years tend to be cooler on average. But behind, in addition to that natural cycle, we're also seeing climate change. And so we're seeing a trend in increasing temperatures um, around the world in addition to that El Nino cycle. 2022 was a La Nina year. 2023, we've entered into El Nino. And 2023 was the hottest year on record. And speaking of NASA, a lot of exciting things are planned for this year, and you're even preparing to launch a new satellite. Can you tell us a little bit more about this project? Yeah, in just a few weeks, we'll launch a new satellite called PACE, or Plankton, Aerosol, Cloud, and Ocean Ecosystem. PACE is going to give us more information about the sea and the sky. So in the sea, we'll be able to look at the surface ocean and see um, the, the life in it. And so we can see things like information about fisheries, harmful algal blooms. It's also going to give us information about these tiny particles in the atmosphere that can either reflect or absorb sunlight, so they affect temperature. They also have impacts on air quality. And PACE will be joining a bigger fleet of Earth-observing satellites that we have here at NASA. You know, given what we've experienced in 2023, what does this say about future trends when it comes to climate? So one of the things we do is try to understand what's driving current trends, and that gives us information about the future. And what we know is that a lot of the warming trend is driven by greenhouse gases. So in the future, how much warming we will experience depends on future emissions. As long as greenhouse gas levels in the atmosphere continue to increase, we'll continue to see more warming, and we'll see more impacts along with that. Some of the impacts we experience will become more frequent, some more intense, and some both. On NASA's end, what actionable steps is your organization taking to addressing climate issues? One of the primary ways NASA addresses climate change is by providing information to people all around the world. So we observe and understand climate, and we're providing that information to local communities so they can understand what's happening. So we can understand things about agriculture, so how much crops we produce and how that changes over time. We can provide information about sea level rise and coastal impacts that it has, about wildfires. And all of that information is publicly available, and we're working to make it easier to use so people have information about what's happening where they live. Finally, for anyone who wants to learn more about this data and how it impacts where we live, where can viewers find that? 
So you can get all of this information and more at nasa.gov earth or on social media at NASA Earth. Thank you so much for joining us, Kate. Thank you for having me.